In the shadow of Mount Hood, NBC brings you the Rose City Grand Prix Portland, presented by Toshiba Copiers and Fax, as the drivers and teams from the Great Le Mans 24-hour race come to the States to challenge the best sports car drivers and teams from this country. These subtle twin grills tell the motoring world that this spectacular prototype sports car is a BMW. Letters that have come to mean better make way. The V12 LMR car debuted in March at Sebring and promptly won. Then on to Europe where they leveled Le Mans. And then last Sunday here on NBC you saw another paralyzing performance in Sonoma, California. Today, the member is on the pole for the fifth round of the American Le Mans series. And its speed, its handling, its fuel economy have given lead driver J.J. Leto a ton of confidence. The story of the GT class has been a year-long battle between German manufacturing rivals Porsche and BMW. Last Sunday, Hans Stuck stole the victory on the final lap for BMW, but this weekend, with the 23 car on pole position, Porsche are looking for a payback. On pole, the BMW Finland's JJ Leto won both races he's entered this year, teamed with British vet Steve Silver. Outside of the front row, Jan Magnussen of the Panos 4, teamed with American Johnny O'Connell, they won at most sport in June. Starting third, the other team Panos Ford, Frenchman Eric Bernard with David Bradham, son of legendary Sir Jack. Starting fourth, the Raffinelli Judd, Italian Mimo Scannarella, and Francis Eric Comas, winner at Road Atlanta. Fifth is the second of the factory BMWs, California's Bill Oberlin, teamed with 99 Le Mans winner Joe Winkelhock of Germany. The top qualifying Ferrari, Stefan Johansson and North Carolina's Jim Matthews in sixth. And here comes the field. Green flag, we're underway. Watch carefully the festival curves, the tight chicane they're coming up to now. You could throw the whole race away right here. Boy, and you saw the Panos just take a peek inside. I think as much as anything, that was just to occupy his mirrors. Oh, there's a car going off. Bill Oberlin's BMW. He has spun in the very first corner. He will have to wait until the entire field goes by. Just a huge error on the opening lap right there. Tires would have been stone cold. He tried to get a little power down so carefully and just nothing, no traction at all. Said it just seconds ago. You can throw the whole race away right there. Omelin is going to have a ton of work to come back from the back of the field. Well, there's J.J. Leto as he's going around. Now here, we're going to get an idea of exactly what did take place here. We'll try and get a replay for you in just a moment, folks. That but, is Omelin. Uh, that's Omelin back underway. Now here, now watch up the inside. You can see Bill's car right there, just turning inside the Raffinelli car. Watch the back end of it. Look at this. Wow. Just almost not even leaving a rubber trail. That was so slick right across the midpoint. It is Plato leading the two Panos machines. It is Eric Bernard second in the number one Panos Ford. And then running in third position is the car started by Jan Magnussen. There is the Bernard machine. You see he's fallen about a second behind Plato in the opening laps. And they are right behind him, O'Connell, zipping in and out of your frame as they work through the curves in the infield part of the course. Now on lap number one, Bill Oberlin and the team BMW, they are the 43 machine, spun at the festival corners, the chicane, just at the end of the front stretch, and dropped all the way to the tail end of the field. He was like 41st out of 42 cars. But he has blasted his way up to 18th position in just these opening moments of the event. Bill has driven very... Oh, no! Man. Wow! Just as I'm saying, he's about ready to pass that BMW. That is one of last year's BMW. Is the black car immediately ahead of that white number 43. It is also a V12 engine BMW. He just got shut off totally going over those curbs. That is real high-speed territory as well. That is Pedro Lamy driving the 26 machine. He's going to drive again there. Now, this is the point oh. leader in the American Le Mans Series prototype standings, Butch Leitzinger with his teammate Elliot Forbes Robinson. The top two drivers separated by one point with Robinson the point leader, but they are on pit road just moments into the race. Yeah, and you can see Leitzinger right there. He, looked, he is getting oh, out. Oh, no. This has a huge effect on the championship. Oh, number nine BMW. Hans Stuck. He is stopped. Hans Stuck, winner at Sears Point one week ago on NBC. Remember the last lap pass? There he is, climbing out of the car. That's another team that has had mechanical difficulties for some of their cars through the weekend. Well, gentlemen, right behind me, you can see James Weaver, the second driver of the 16 car, talking to Elliot Forbes Robertson, the second driver of the 20 car. Elliot can change into the 16 because he has not yet driven the 20 car and still go for that points finish. So James is standing aside to let his teammate chase the championship points lead. And trouble is on the racetrack. That is the 27 machine that Didier Tay started and just turned over to Freddie Leinhardt and he's gotten into some pretty good contact with one of the tire barriers. Yeah, I think that's the tire barrier that leads onto the front straight. You can see he has contacted the left front fender which has pitched the car around. Just a violent counterclockwise spin. And the car is stopped there. They will have to put a pace car out to gather this thing up and put the tires back in position. Now the leader is in for a pit stop. Here's Steve Evans. 
The 42 car, the leader, is in indeed. Let's see if they just changed left side tires or any tire changes whatsoever. There is a driver change. Steve Silver, the Englishman, replaces JJ. Leto, Leto bolting him in. Well, no tire changes for BMW, but the number two Paynos, which stopped a moment or two ago, did take a tire change. You can see Eric Bernard, the Frenchman who started the car, strapping in David Brabham. Now the team will get to work, and they will put a new set of Michelin tires on the Paynos car number one. As the green flag comes out, back at it first and uh, second, uh, right together as we go to the green. Well, talking a horsepower, look at the black and silver up the outside. He cannot do it. J.J. Leto is going to hang on to it. That is David Bravo in the Pano's machine, the black car left of your screen. The white car is now Steve Soper. All of the teams making the driver change under the pit stops during the full course caution. So Soper, the Englishman behind the wheel now, trying to hold off Brabham as the field gets back up to full song. It is the BMW of Steve Soper leading David Bradham yeah. and the Panos to the start finish but line. Look at the horsepower. Look at this. Down the front straight, the Panos has got a great run. Tremendous burst of speed down the front straight. He took advantage, got inside the BMW, and has been a clean pass on this race. Change for the lead. Bravo now out in front of Soper. Here's another look into the festival turns. Watch how cleanly this is done. Look at the tires. There is no lockup available on either car. There is nice, clean braking. Brabham, just, oh, that, that was a beautiful move. But there is a potential problem cropping up on this machine. We're hearing that Brabham may receive a stop and go penalty for an infraction possibly passing out of the caution flag. And there it was, he got the black flag. Martin Haven has more on this story from Pit Lane. Martin? Well, the story from Sports Car has been clarified a little bit. It was not for that passing maneuver we saw there after the safety car period. It was for passing under yellow before the safety car was on the track. So the lead that David Brabham worked so hard to get and is working hard to keep in all that heavy traffic is gonna go away as he reports to the pit lane for a stop and go penalty. Oh. Off the final corner, there goes the Pano's to the pitch. Brabham peels off for the black flag. Soper goes back into the lead in the BMW, down the 50 mile an hour pit road speed limit, all the way down the front stretch while he's on the pit lane, plus the stop, and being nose to tail for the race lead, let alone being in the lead. Wow, boy, is all gone. You, you just saw his John Force burnout right there. Right now it is Steve Soper in Team BMW leading the Rose City Grand Prix at Portland. You're watching the American Le Mans series on NBC. This is the Porsche machine that Dirk Muller started and is still behind the wheel of uh, an hour and 40 minutes into the race. Had himself a heck of a run so far, but it has not been trouble free despite the fact that he's got almost a lap lead on the second place car in class. Let's take a look at what happened to Muller a little while ago. And as you watch Dirk go into this corner, just keep an eye on the apex of the corner. You watch a bend it, doesn't even get close off the outside of the track, and then around and backwards. Mueller basically has driven the whole race so far without stopping for fuel. He should be getting pretty close to stopping, I would think, within the next few laps, because uh, their fuel economy has been most depressed. In fact, we're being told there is a yellow flag situation on the racetrack, so you can definitely expect Mueller to stop. There it is. That is the 83 machine of Zach Brown and Stefano Butiero. And they have come to a stop there out of the backside of the course in a very, very bad spot. That's extremely high speed there, that part of the course. Again, good timing by the, the Pano's crew taking advantage of the yellow flag. David Brabham staying in the car. And let's go to the GT leader. We talked about him not making a pit stop yet. That changes right now, Martin Haven. Well, this may change the strategy of the race as well because they came in under the earlier yellow but did not change drivers. They needed to do that in the next five minutes. Otherwise, Court Wagner would dr drive less than his 55-minute minimum allowance and not score points. So this yellow flag, they could have engineered this themselves. They would not have asked for a better time. Now, we're getting ready to go to the green flag here, and the BMW, the lead car, has not pitted under the caution flag. A mistake? I think it was, because again, the, the Panos have come out with, with fresh tires, they are loaded with fuel, they're ready to tear at it again, and we just may get this battle resumed, the one that we saw stopped by the earlier black flag. This could easily restart. Ace car is off, and now the leader begins to accelerate to the green flag. Steve Soper back up at full steam as the rest of the field gets up through the gearbox. He has a good lead down the front straight here, and you can see his own teammate is not too far behind. The white car is cutting through traffic. Now, the Pano's machines that did make the pit stop, they're going to be a pretty good back uh, distance far, farther. Oh, and a spin line. right there. Look at this. George that Robinson. number 74, yep. George, George Robinson. Robinson loops around. That's exiting the festival curves. 
cold tires will catch you out so quickly on this track. Here is the new leader of the Rose City Grand Prix. It is David Brabham in the Pato's Ford. He has taken the top spot away from the BMWs. We talked a little while ago about pit strategy. The BMW choosing not to pit under the full course caution. When the Pato's team did, the BMW had to come down pit road under the green. It, is, it has proven costly. Yeah, it's a great guessing game. You have to just really hit it as lucky as, as you do with talent out here. And right now, it, it looks like the Pato's has made the right decisions. Now let's get some updates from the two teams involved in the race for the win. Pit, strategy calls, and so on. First to Steve Evans. This is so typically BMW. Just typical. They came in with a battle plan, and even a yellow flag isn't going to change it. They stayed out there with Steve Silver for a long time. The Panos finished. When they did hit the 42 car, it was under green. As you mentioned, they lost a lot of track time. They don't seem to care. J.J. Leto is back in the car. The feeling here, Martin, is that the Panos cannot go the distance on fuel. What do you hear down there? They might well go the distance on fuel. You're looking here at the uh, non-stop conversations that will continue right until the checkered flag. This is the one pit. Uh, they are pretty certain that they can go the distance in car number one. In car number two, they said, yeah, we think so, maybe, but they're crossing a lot of fingers. So David Brabham in the number one, Pato's Ford leading the Rose City Grand Prix over his teammate, Jan Magnussen, in the number two machine, the Pato's Ford. And right now, those two drivers out in front of J.J. Leto in the BMW by 56 seconds, almost a full lap. Now to the GT class, the race lead is uh, been in the hands of Dirk Muller, who just gave way to Court Wagner on a pit stop, also gave up the lead on their pit stop. They came in under the full course yellow, took on the full load of fuel. Some of the BMW M3s did not. That's right, the car that's right up ahead right now is the car of Brian Cunningham. And he is in a, a nice lead at this point. Wagner is catching him, and this is gonna be interesting to see. Can he turn the tables from last week to where BMW stuck by him? Whether he passes on the racetrack or not, that's kind of academic. All three BMWs will pit before the end of the race. Oh, well, the, the kiss of death. We start talking about the yeah. great race, and there it goes. Back out onto the front straight, and once again, we should see the Porsche close up on the back of that BMW. Down past the start finish line, running for the lead in the GT class. Yeah, Little look move at this. to the look, inside, look trying to break the draft. Great closing right here. He can get, and again, he does not do it. The BMW has got outstanding brakes. This car is very good, very effective on turn end, and puts the power down really well. Power. Here he is down the inside on the back straightaway. Inside, because of the corner they're approaching, will be a left hand turn. And he is by and into the class lead in GT. So, Court Wagner from Los Angeles. Puts Porsche back out in front and quickly following him through what? goes J.J. Leto in the pole sitting BMW that has fallen back to third position now. That car is second place in the GTS class. That is Tommy Archer back aboard the second of the two Dodge Vipers. The two team Vipers have basically been the story in that class all day. They traded the lead back and forth three different times. The machine that Archer yeah. started and the team car that David Donahue started. They've traded the lead three times throughout the race in this class, but the Porsches have not been able to get up there and challenge the Vipers for supremacy in GTS. Now, one of the Pato's machines has come down pit road, back up front to the leaders. This is the second place car, Jan Magnussen coming in. We'd heard earlier they were probably gonna go to the finish on fuel. A little change of heart here. Now the question becomes, what about the lead car? David Brabham in the number one Pato's machine. Is he going to have to stop for fuel before the finish? Well, there's oh, a just ahead of the leaders. Festival curves. That is Alex Cappy in the Toshiba Ferrari. And it probably, oh no, he, wow. he might have even got punted by his own teammate. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell if there's any damage on that car or not. Didier Doronigas, the teammate in the Olive Garden car. Here's another look at it. Well, oh no, he was already, he, he just simply locked it up, got in way too deep. The rear brakes were locked and that was it. Kiss it goodbye. And you look at the overall leader of the event, it is David Brabham driving one of the Pato's Fords out in front now over the BMW of J.J. Leto. The team Pato's Ford was in second spot until a moment ago. We showed you the pit stop that he made for a splash of fuel. He came off the pit stop, still with second spot. But remember right after the pit stop, the big jam up involving Alex Cappy down at the, uh, the festival curve section of the course. Yeah. The yellow flag was waving in that part of the course. And while that yellow was out in that section of the track, 
he passed one of the slower cars, got a stop and go penalty, came down pit road for that and has fallen back to third position. 43 car, that's Joe, Wick Joe Wicklehawk, now in fourth place, running consistently but well back. Again, this car can't challenge third place either. Looking a little farther back in fifth position, this is the privateer BMW team, Thomas Bashir behind the wheel. This car, uh, basically a year-old car that's yes. been updated for 1999. Now, this is Eric Bernard in the Raffinelli Judd-powered machine. Look at the right front fender. All right, Eric Comas. Right, I'm uh, sorry, yeah, the, the, uh, the Judd V10. And interestingly enough, a week ago, we saw something similar. So I wonder if Yokohama tires maybe have a problem with these temperatures. We saw a tire explode at Sears Point, do similar damage to the other side of the car. And again, here he lost the tire. This really loses tremendous downforce, but Unlike Sears Point, where it just about kills you, here you can get away with it. It is Pato's out in front, David Brabo behind the wheel, trying to stretch fuel to victory lane. 58 minutes since they've been on pit road yeah. for some gasoline blast. They have to be on fuel. Oh, one of the BMWs smoking up ahead. Oh, it? 43 that is Winklehawk. Off course, smoke behind the machine. Maybe just got on the brakes, locked them up because he is still so. under power. Yeah. I, I think he just got in way too deep. You can almost see his head just bend a little bit. He tried to look and see where the traffic is, and by that time, he gets on the brakes, locked up the right front wheel. Now, a point there, Bill. That hole was already there before he went off, so maybe the loss of downforce on that left front wheel still under power down the back stretch. This car has finished second in the last two events, second at Mosport, second at Sears Point, looking to move it up one spot on the victory podium today. Final corner coming up for David Bravo. And he's being so cautious. Well, here he goes. At this point, he can almost coast. They run the final out ah. on one <laughs> tank of fuel. The victory salute to the pit crew as he comes to the checkered flag. David Brabham with his co-driver, Eric Bernard, wins the Rose City Grand Prix. Now the class winners in GTS and GT running right together. It is the Viper in Dodge going to win for the GTS category. David Donahue will take the checkered flag and you ride with Court Wagner as he avenges the loss of one week ago and scores the victory in GT here in Portland. To the winner's circle, here's Steve <laughs> Evans. David, let me guess, you fumed this front engine beauty right into victory lane. Uh, it's amazing, I mean, it was full of drama the whole race. Um, <laughs> Eric did a great job at the start, keeping up with the BMW and then uh, when it was time to change, I got into the lead and then I passed under yellow. I just didn't see it. And I'm, you know, I'm sorry to the guys. And uh, towards the end there, it was really a fantastic strategy by the Vistian Painos crew. They did fantastic because we, we got the yellow at the right time. And, and towards the end, we were just breathing it all the way through. And I was trying to think of everything I knew possible from my experience on how to save fuel. And um, in the end, it worked. It was fantastic. Sunday, September 19th, the American Le Mans series continues with Petit Le Mans on Road Atlanta, the 1,000-mile race. Sunday, September 19th, here on NBC Sports.